Uh-oh, someone's teaching an old dog new tricks over here. everybody, welcome back to Bish's RV. Josh the RV Nerd here with my first look at a new series from the Wolfpack series of fifth wheel toy haulers. This is their new Diamond series. So they have the Gold series stick and tin travel trailers. They have their Platinum series travel trailers and fifth wheels. And that used to be it for a long time. There's a lot of people like, man, I, I like my Wolfpack, but I'd kind of like to be able to step up to well, something and they had nothing working to on offer. creeping up there a little bit. And that's where the new Diamond series comes in. And they're actually one of uh, the only fifth wheel toy hauler brands that is using their their very unconventional skeletal structure this is not a laminated rv but it's also not a stick built rv like you've always known wolfpack to be they're basically building like a cedar creek or a river stone um where it's a every 16 inches on center basically it's an aluminum stud it's what i call good bones construction because I mean, God forbid you have some kind of crazy leak or something like that. Yeah, you could take down a wall panel. You could put up some new insulation. But the skin, the uh, the wall skeletal structure, it, it's, it can't rot, basically. So that is something that I really like. It's my personal belief that this is one of the longest lasting ways to build an RV. And interestingly, it makes an RV very strong without adding a ton of weight. It's actually a lighter way to, uh, a way to build things, which is good because this sucker is big. You are not in half ton and, and Ford Ranger country in this thing. It's got a 14 foot garage. I love the kitchen setup on it. And they went with a double sofa situation instead of dinette. And very unconventional, but it saves some space. It's their, their first full Wolfpack, I think, with a full bed slide. I could be wrong on that. Usually they do wardrobe slides. It also has, like, a full bathroom built into the bedroom. It's, it's very different, but now that I've seen it, I kind of like it. And I'm curious. I want to hear what do you think about this new floor plan, the new series, the new style, the new features that they're bringing here that they never had before. Leave me a comment as we go. Let me know. So when you first walk in the door, this is basically what you're going to see right here. And at a glance, it looks very wolf packy, and that's for very good reason. It's, uh, well, you know, a wolf pack. But if you look a little closer... You'll see some things like solid surface counters, like a 16 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge that the uh, even the Platinum Series Wolf Packs don't normally get. Again, this being their new Diamond class, and we'll see how long that uh, series kind of continues. Now you've got 30,000 BTUs of cooling power in this, so that's dual 15,000 centralized units. Uh, so the living room air conditioner is centralized back into the rear garage space. It does not have a third AC option. In fact. This new Diamond series has exactly zero options. The things that people have been asking for to be optional on the previous Platinum Series Wolf Packs, well, those are really what kind of came in to be standard here in this new Diamond series. And I have, every time I say Platinum, Diamond, whatever, I have to try to remember which one I'm in because it's like the names are very, I think, straightforward, but it's kind of messing me up a little bit. Anyway. Now, you don't have a third air conditioner back here, but what you do have is a big XL vent fan. So if you really want to force some fresh air through here, you can do that, which is really handy if you're boondocking and all the hot air that uh, is created just by existing in here doesn't cook you out of the place. Now, this has your Judy Dench Benchy Bench, the very traditional thing you find in most fifth wheel toy haulers. You see that it can drop down into a pair of big sleepers. Uh, you've also got the ability to, uh, you know, like leave the whole thing up out of the way. You can, it can do whatever you want. If you want it in just dual sofa mode like I've got right here, well, obviously, you know, you can do that too. Now on the back, what we're staring at is something, again, people have been requesting, that three seasons patio wall. And now that's really nice when you're sitting here in daytime lounge mode. Now, both of those have like the, the fold down armrest kind of cup holder jobs that flip out. I've just only got the one set flip down so far. But uh, when you're in sleeper mode, if you do have somebody back here, uh, without that three seasons wall, either they're going to have to really just have nothing but a roll down tent wall between them and the exterior, which is like being in a hybrid camper, which is okay, but you're going to hear everything. Um, or you can actually, or you have to close the ramp. Now you don't have to do that. Now you can just, uh, you have like a hard door wall kind of between you here, which I think a lot of people have been looking for. Now, those do have panels that can slip open for airflow. 
And the reason I left this little gate open is because there are a set of stable steps that you can attach to the back of this thing. Where we are parked in position currently, though, is right up against uh, the, the embankment roadside. So not only might we hear a little bit of vehicle noise in the background, it kind of prevents me from hooking the steps up onto this thing. And I just kind of wanted to give you the, uh, the little bit of an idea there. Now, what is kind of cool, if you're going to hang out here on the patio... The flood loading light that you see to the right of the backup camera prep, that is actually a nice way to kind of keep the party going in the evening hours, which is a, a fun little thing to do. Uh, again, the three seasons wall, I think is a major, major differentiating factor. The structure, the three seasons wall, those two things right there alone to me really help define this separately from the Platinum Series. We're gonna dive more into the uh, the structure of the RV when we step outside. Now, coming in from the patio area, some nice window coverage in here. One of the other things I want you to see, though, is that big vent fan that was all the way up at the ceiling that you can't possibly reach unless you're Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. Well, good news, you don't have to, because you got a little remote control right down here to you know get the job done for you. Now, it's kind of cool that they have some uh, laundry hookups back here. What I don't know is the width exactly of like those, I don't know, Splendid or whatever laundry machines that you can get for an RV, if they may be problematic for the two entry doors. I haven't personally measured and checked that out. So that might be something just to look into and verify. Now the little half bath over here, I like that it doesn't kind of stick into the garage very far. The elbow room was not bad. It wasn't, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It wasn't bad though and i do like that they have like an actual sink in here instead of just that little kind of plastic shower slapped against the sidewall of the camper kind of thing that some of the other wolf packs do i thought that's a nice touch i i want to be totally straight and square with you here though this bathroom lacks its own dedicated vent fan so why as far as i can tell well, the idea behind this one is there's a little slot at the door and then you've got that big XL remote controlled vent fan up there in the ceiling. I guess the idea is that will act as fumigation exhaust. Now, it has a loft above that half bath, which poses a bit of a problem. So unless they found a way to vent out the sidewall of the RV, which actually can be done, I've seen it done in other RVs before, it might be, I don't know, a little bit problematic. Now over here on the left, though, that, it's kind of cool. It comes with this handy like wall mount for the stable steps. So it's not just laying around on the floor. It's not skidding around and bashing into your, you know, your full dresser kind of Harley or something like that when you're going down the road. This right here though, this is a mount for a driven portable Bluetooth speaker. And if you ever scan this with your, uh, your, your phone's camera, it can take you to an area where you can purchase that directly. But that's all that is. It's a mount and charger for a specific Bluetooth speaker that is conveniently not included um, with the RV. Now, I just realized all the way down here in this rubberized garage floor, I never unhooked the uh, the bunk ladder. So those drop down beds that we looked at, that's a ladder that can help you get to those. Also, the loft, uh, it's almost like a loft and a half kind of thing that you're going to see. That's the ladder that can get you up there. Now, TV hookups ready for you. And in the upper right corner, you see a, a camera mount. If you're going down the road and you hit a wicked chuck hole and you want to make sure that your bike's still standing up, you can use that to kind of eyeball that, which I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. And by the way, um, if, uh, you know, I get that I ramble on and I run a long time in my videos. That's why I, I chapter mark these so that, you know, if you want to skip ahead or skip back, it, it makes it a little bit easier to get to the segment that you're looking for. Now they've got some warm toe friendly carpet right here in front of the slide. And I know that that's going to be a thing that some people dislike and that's going to be something that some people do like. Some brands do carpetless, some brands don't. This is one that does not. Uh, over here, they, they've gone with two different theater seats actually, which is interesting. This one uh, is a population controller because it keeps a hard separator between you and uh, the individual beside you. Whereas uh, over here, although it occurs to me, I've got the camera not pointed at the other theater seat as I'm panning around. This one is a little more cuddle compliant and that is a dual theater reclining kind of love seat. And I thought it was really interesting that they didn't go with a traditional dining arrangement here because back in the garage, you've got a floating picnic table that I guess I haven't actually displayed for you because it's stored under the front bed that we'll get to in a minute. Sorry, I'm batting a thousand today. Squirrel. Um, 
So you've got a table that can float around the RV. You can do some Dinofa action. You could do a double Dinofa if you're so inclined. Uh, or you can, you know, eat back in the garage. Uh, three seasons virtually uh, al fresco. That always reminds me. Uh, remember that movie Casper with Christina Ricci? And the ghosts are like, hey, maybe tonight we'll, uh, you know, we'll eat al fresco. And the fat uh, ghost is like, uh, sure, I don't know who he is, but he sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, just a dumb pun that I always loved. Now, sitting right here at the theater seat, buddy, you're on Boardwalk and Park Place. I mean, you can see my bald head shining in the reflection of that thing. And this is the first of two electric space heat and Tootsie Toasters that you have in this sucker right there. Uh, up in the bedroom, it actually has its own separate electric fireplace. Although, obviously, the RV does have its own uh, conventional propane furnace. Now, I'm not typically a fan of open face storage. However, I'm going to give them a pass here, and I'll tell you why. Because if those had doors, and if the doors opened, bounced open in transit while the slide was closed and retracted, those doors could get caught behind the slide fascia, and you wouldn't see it until you were hitting the slide button, and it was too late, and you broke stuff. So, all in all, I don't think that was necessarily a bad decision on their part. I think they might have actually done a fairly smart thing right there. And I love these. They're, they're not... Like, they're not big, but they're big, and I know that sounds dumb, but these U-shaped uh, kitchens right here where everything kind of wraps right around the campsite cook, it's a ton of countertop prep space. And, uh, you know, with this not being a laminated wall RV, they were able to put power outlets exactly where you want them, which a lot of big toy haulers simply cannot accomplish. One of the other things that I thought was kind of interesting here is up here above the entertainment center, there's some deep storage because that goes uh, basically all above the camp kitchen. And you've got that big flip-up counter extension that if you added a bar stool or two, could be an extra little dining space, maybe, I don't know, a workstation or something. Although if somebody is sitting there doing some workstation stuff, they're going to be in the way of the entertainment, certainly. Now, up top here, it's very interesting. They've got, like I said, almost like a bunk and a half it's like a dog leg left kind of extra space. But what's cool about that is somebody is staying up in the loft. They actually have room for lots of duffel bags and stuff. Or you could just use it as attic storage. So, you know, there's a couple different ways you could go about it. Um, the, uh, again, uh, refrigerator, that is a 12-volt DC compressor unit. So that is fast cooling. Extremely uh, travel friendly as well because... Let's say you, you accidentally left your battery disconnect off or anything like that. Just the uh, the power coming in from the pigtail of the vehicle could power that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need to correct myself right there. You will need to have the battery disconnect on to run that. But let's say your batteries were dead. As soon as you plug into your vehicle, that fridge can fire up. They don't take a lot of juice uh, to get their caboose in order, which I think is uh, kind of cool and kind of interesting. Now, again, being fair, not all the windows open for airflow. Although I do like where they have those USB plugs. I, I think they could almost bring those down a little bit. Uh, because, again, with this effectively being a hollow wall stuffed with residential batten insulation, there's nothing stopping them from doing that. Now, it does have the Smurf blue light accent lights above the slide fascia and stuff like that. I just have them turned off right now. Um, not a lot of campsite window coverage on this, but with the patio deck, is that as big of a deal? I... I don't know. I, I could see that answer going both ways. I'm, I'm just kind of curious what you think there. Now, uh, moving on up to the east side, you might notice you see a bedroom door, but you don't see a bathroom door. They did something a little different, and I kind of like it. But then again, I see the same things all day, every day for manufacturers. So when I see someone do something differently, I, I feel like I give it maybe arbitrary bonus points. So feel free to talk me off the ledge on this one. Uh, so first of all, something Wolfpack doesn't do a lot of is a full bed slide. Now, because the RV is already 45 foot long, they just didn't have more room to spare. So it is a queen bed. There is no king swaption. It's just, it is what it is basically. Uh, now, the, uh, we're, you know what? Hold on. I've been telling you about this table I stowed under the bed. Let's take a look down there with our x-ray vision. Uh, that's a free-floating folding leg table, which is kind of cool, because then you can put that sucker just about anywhere you want. And this is a very unconventional closet arrangement. I'm really curious to know what you think about it, where you've got the triple dresser drawers there, 
But then you've got that like full hanging kind of rack action going on uh, down below that. Again, a little bit unconventional, but I'm kind of digging it. Now, uh, across from the bed here, and if like you don't want to run the, the, the furnace, or if it is pretty darn cold and you're shivered at night, you can add some extra heat into this little room very quickly with that uh, space heater right there. So if you ever fired up a space heater in like a little office or something like that, this room, it would, it'll warm up fast. That's, that's, that's a fact. Now, if you are sensitive to light or if like flashing lights give you a migraine or something, you might want to look away real quick. Uh, starting right about now, all of these windows have... Uh, what are called the zebra shades, where you can kind of lighten it up, you can darken it up, you could do a little bit of whatever you like. Now, if you are one of the light-sensitive individuals, uh, we are done flashing lights at you, so you should be uh, okay there. Um, I'd rather take a couple extra seconds to sort of explain what we're going to do in the video, set your expectations so that somebody, you know, doesn't, I don't know, have a seizure or just a headache or something. I want you to enjoy watching your content. Crazy, I know. Now, uh, over here, We've got our second centralized air conditioner. Again, uh, they, they both tie into the central ducting. They're both 15,000 BTU units. So we have a 30,000 BTU total air system. And then we come to door number two. They have the full bathroom totally privatized, built right into the main bedroom. And I think they did this because it allowed them to shave off a little bit of extra length on the RV uh, by building it this way. But I actually also kind of like it. But again, it's different. So I might just be liking different. Um, the way that the bath sink counter comes up to that, the elbow room was, I'm going to say, just okay for a person of my size and stature. And they've got, uh, they upgraded the shower hardware in this one, they got that crazy space fixture right there that comes with the separate shower wand that you can use like a, a shower microphone is one of the other little benefits of that, I do suppose. Now, um, just like we saw in the garage, you are getting the big vent fan here, which I really do like, respect, and appreciate. I'm not a fan of open face bath storage myself, but I have learned from viewers like you that as long as what you're putting there is soft goods like towels, they work just fine. But if you want to put some bottles of like shampoos or something in there, body wash, you're going to have to come up with some kind of cargo net system or something to keep all that stuff uh, from floating around. So I think we've got the general feel and vibe of this sucker. What I haven't done yet, what I'm curious about, is what kind of road mode access do we have here? Now, I know it doesn't look at it, or like it right now, looking at the side of the slide, but this might actually be better than I thought, because this entertainment slide is shallow. And what that means is that if you walk into the door, if you notice, there's a little bit of space to kind of tiptoe through here. Now, you will technically be stepping on the inside lip of the slide. So if you nudge this slide out just a touch to get through there, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But you could theoretically straddle your way around that thing, do the old Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> and you could get back to this thing. Now, you can't get back to the garage area, but you have a separate door to get to that. As far as toy haulers go, this is about as good as I've ever seen a multi-slide toy hauler. So the thing to remember here, though, is she is 45 feet long. And with full cargo, it could weigh over 17,000 pounds. So I do think you're in big truck country. I, uh, I, I don't think it's inappropriate to say a, a dually would be a recommended vehicle for something like this. If for no other reason than just the physical size and stature of it, the length of it could push around a, a smaller vehicle. The longer wheelbase you have, you're going to be happy. Now, that is cool because it gives us lots of space, but it also presents a bit of a challenge in that um, a big rig like this you're going to have to be really smart about where you take it. You know, you can't just pop into your favorite state park for the weekend. Now, it's very obvious when you look at the previous Wolfpack series on the left versus the one on the right that we're looking at something, you know, a little bit different here. And what's kind of cool is over here in the Diamond series, they do everything Platinum does and then some more. They, they take it up a notch. I think one of the major things is something you can't see. They are not a stick-built structure like a common Wolfpack. Now, the Wolfpack Platinum on our left had fiberglass skin, but it's still a wood skeletal structure beneath. This is a aluminum-studded, non- 
laminated structure. I call that good bones construction. It's like a cedar creek, it's like a river stone, and it is exceptionally uncommon in the fifth wheel toy hauler market. I won't claim to know every RV. I will tell you, I'm not aware of another fifth wheel toy hauler who is using that style of skeletal structure. So, and it is something I really like. It's not just a gimmick. It is something I've seen over the years. RVs built this way, have the capacity to last a very long time. Now up front, you've got that NPS uh, inverter generator thing. Um, NPS is the supplier. It's a Yamaha generator built through a third party. It even comes with a Yamaha owner's manual and key fob. It's got a remote start. It also has a pull start on it. So let's just say, God forbid, you do somehow totally sap your batteries. Well, you can uh, keep from looking and feeling like a sap without your uh, your generator running. See what it did there? It's not a good joke, but maybe you picked up what I was putting down. Um, up front here, they the, you may notice they have a miniature drop frame, just like the Platinum Series. Once again, that's where your generator is housed. What that allows them to do is it allows them to have a full side-to-side -side pass through that also has a little bit of a dog leg right kind of storage compartment over here. And another major difference on this from the Platinum Series, the Platinum Wolf Packs are auto leveling prepped and these are six point auto leveling standard. And that is a major departure. This is the first time Wolf Pack has ever standardized uh, automatic leveling and it's a nice six point system that'll help keep this whole rig steady. Underbelly's forced air heated. The underbelly has tank heaters. So they're checking those major boxes. Once again, I like that new um, handle from Moride that a lot of these brands are using. That's something I really, really like myself. Now over here, the camp kitchen station, um, it's mounted up a little high because it's mounted in a slide and because it's mounted in an entertainment slide, they really didn't have anywhere that they could mount plumbing pardon my vest up in there by the way but what they did i think is actually pretty feature packed let me give you a, uh, a little bit better look up in here because it actually has a nice little chunk of space in there you see you got the little uh ice maker and those things as long as you got water and you got power buddy you got ice and as long as you got uh, a little bit of 12 volt and some propane you've got hot water because this thing uh has a tankless on-demand water heater Hang on though, I there's on that note, it just occurred to me, there's something that you deserve to know about these. And it would have been real easy for me to not talk about this. It would have been real easy for me to bypass it. It would have been real easy for me to say, look, magnet holdbacks and slam latches all, all the way around, even the, the, the propane doors. Isn't that nice? Thank you, you know? Well, yeah. They're 20 pound tank standard from the factory. There's one on the other side as well. Now there's obviously room in here. If you wanted to put a bigger tank in, you can. But on a 45 foot fifth wheel toy hauler, 20 pound propane tanks, ish, I just, mm. Now the reason they're doing that is because that's just all this group does basically. They just buy those tanks in massive, massive quantities to get some savings on them. And there's logic in that, I get it. I do feel I would probably spend some extra coin to swap those out, but that's my two cents. I'd kind of like to hear your input on it. Uh, Goodyear Endurance Radials down here, and uh, holy cow, those are a, uh, <laughs> that's a 16 inch, that's a big tire right there. And back here in the garage, they still wanted to give you some stability. They gave you the nicer uh, handle coming in and out, and they went with those little drop down foot pegs on the fold out stable steps. What do you guys think about those? Because I've never really camped with them. I don't have experience camping with them, but in theory, I really like that setup because it gives you, I like if you're on some goof, stupid, uneven ground, I feel like it's less problematic than the traditional fold out stable steps while still basically giving you the, uh, the same function. Now I'm literally standing uh, in the road, trying not to get uh, splattered like Frogger over here. So, but I did want to give you one full look so pardon me if I uh, I don't back up and get splattered like Frogger because there's a car behind me right now. Dual power awnings, which, you know, when there's a kitchen slide under an awning, sometimes people get weird about that. I respect it. I get it. But the fact is you've got that full awning off the side over here. Now, it doesn't have an awning off the back. I don't know why there's any reason why you wouldn't be able to add like a, I don't know, a bat wing awning or something like that over here. But they don't offer it from the factory. These have absolutely zero options. But one of the things that they are doing from the factory that again, they've never done before is that three seasons 
uh, you know, wall right there, the, the double sliding French doors. And, and they do swing open for loading, uh, by the way, just in case you were curious. But what's kind of cool about that is if somebody is using that rear room as a sleeping area, you don't necessarily have to close the ramp every night which is a very nice convenience factor down here. Now we've got a 30 gallon fuel cell that'll feed both the generator and the fuel station. Uh, you've also got yourself a sewer hose holder down here. One thing I do wanna mention though, is that you have a black tank exhaust for the half bath in the back, and then you've got your, uh, your, your kitchen and your bathroom poles up front. And again, I, I try to be fair and I try to share the good with the bad. That is all the way under the slide but i just noticed they put the tank poles all the way up in front of the slide so you don't have to crawl under the slide so what you need to do when you get to your campsite is hook up your sewer stuff then open the slides and then it's 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 all ace buddy it's it's easy from there um you may have noticed the rv has uh a uh, a side mount telescopic ladder uh, like hookup basically it doesn't include the ladder from the factory so keep in mind when you are doing your little RV grocery shopping on Amazon or whatever you're going to want to get the extra long telescopic ladder otherwise you're gonna have troubles I kind of want to just give you a, a quick look at where all the uh, the tank hookups the black flush all that is located again your black and gray for the kitchen and the front private bathroom they are not even close to being under that slide house so I don't love the two sewer hookup. I do really like though, that they at least put the sewer hookups as close as they could. And they did give you tank pull handles where you could reach them. Um, by the way, you can't really see it from where we're at. And I don't have a trailer I can get on top of nearby, but it does have a basic battery tending solar package up there that has actually been giving us all the 12 volt we needed uh, through this video today. So I've gone on and on and on, as I tend to do, to give you the info. If you'd like to see where we have one of these parked, um, check the links in the video description. You can see where we have one, what we're asking on a uh, given day. These are newer, so we may not have a whole lot of them out there quite yet. And I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this? I, my, I, I, I've kind of said, I, it's not the, the be-all, end-all. It's not the top-level fifth-wheel toy hauler on the market. But I see where they're stepping up, and I actually think there's sort of this, like, more casual hauler and then luxury fifth wheel full timer and there's like a gap in between that isn't always well serviced i'm kind of glad to see this out there so i'd be curious is this the platinum series is this concept something they should continue expanding on or what's your two cents on it good bad ugly in between i've tried to shoot you straight and i'd love to hear the same from you and when you're ready we're ready we don't do hidden dealer fees we just do everything else basically so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone